Welcome to Module 5. In this module, we will discuss in detail the anatomy of the digestive system. For ease of learning, this module is divided into two parts. Part 1 is dedicated to the digestive tract while Part 2 is for the digestive accessory organs. At the end of this module, you should be able to identify the organ and the associated structures in each segment of the digestive tract and identify the parts of the different digestive accessory organs. The digestive system is consists of an alimentary canal which extends from the mouth to the anus where the food and digested feed material is passing through and accessory glands which include the salivary gland, the liver, and the pancreas. The digestive system of the dog is described as monogastric meaning they have a simple single chambered stomach. Their digestive tract is relatively short in contrast to other domestic animals. In this particular part of the module, we will discuss specifically the anatomy of the digestive tract. The digestive tract begins with the oral cavity. The cavity extends from the lip to the entrance of the pharynx. The oral cavity is divided into an oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper. The oral vestibule is the space between the lips and the teeth. It is further subdivided into a labial and a buccal vestibule. If you put your tongue in front of your incisors and your lips, the space occupied by your tongue is the labial vestibule or the space between the lips and the incisor. If you directed your tongue laterally to your cheek, the space occupied by your tongue between the lips and the cheek is called the buccal vestibule. On the other hand, the oral cavity proper is the actual space occupied by the tongue in a normal resting position. It is bounded rostrally by the lips, laterally by the cheeks, dorsally by the hard palate, and ventrally by the tongue. The oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper communicates via the interdental spaces, the largest of which is the diastema or the physiologic gap located between the canine teeth and the cheek teeth in dog. This physiologic gap is narrow in dog in contrast to herbivores like ruminants and horses with very wide diastema. Now let us discuss the different structures present or serving as boundary of the oral cavity. First is the lips. As previously mentioned, it forms the rostral and most of the lateral external boundaries of the vestibule. The upper lip and the lower lip meet at the angle of the mouth or the lip commissure. In dogs, the upper lip is pendulous and presses on the lower lip. The general looseness of the lips creates a large vestibule. This is an advantage in administering liquid medicine. The cheek forms the caudal portion of the lateral walls of the vestibule. Cheeks in dogs are small because of the large mouth opening. At the dorsal roof of the oral cavity is the hard palate. Remember, this is represented by the osseous part of the palatine, maxilla, and the incisive bone. This is covered by a mucosa that covers its oral surface. There are around 6 to 10 palatine rugae that transversely cross the oral cavity. The hard palate is widest at the level of the fourth cheek tooth or the upper carnation tooth and the median raphe, usually replaced by a ridge. The soft palate is a direct continuation of the hard palate. This is particularly long in dog, thus posed a difficulty in breathing in brachycephalic breeds. The incisive papilla is a rounded eminence located just caudal to the upper central incisor. On each side of this papilla is the orifice of the incisive duct, which communicates with the vomeronasal organ or the Jacobson's organ. This is important in the mating behavior of dog during heat detection. The teeth are highly specialized structures that serve for the procuring, cutting, and crushing of food as well as for social interaction. They are arranged in two dental arcades. The lower dental arcade is associated with the mandible while the upper dental arcade is associated with the incisive and the maxillary bone. A particular tooth is composed of a crown and a root. The crown is the part of the tooth visible above the mucous membrane of the gum. 
It is the portion of the tooth covered with enamel. The root is the portion of the tooth covered with cement and is embedded in the gum through the socket of bone called alveolus by the periodontium or the periodontal membrane, making up a specialized joint term as gumphosis. The neck is the line junction between the crown and the root. It is also important to learn the three substances comprising the mammalian teeth. Dentine comprises the bulk of the tooth and contains the dental cavity in the center. The dental pulp is a mass of delicate connective tissues, blood vessels, and nerves found in the center of the dental cavity. Dentine is produced by the odontoblasts. Incidentally, dentine constitutes the ivory of the elephant tusk. Enamel is the hardest part of the tooth and the hardest part of the body. It is brilliant white in color. Dog is considered as brachydont or those with short crown teeth. Cementum is a thin bone-like layer on the surface of the teeth. It holds the tooth firmly in the gum and in dogs, it is found only in the root of the teeth. It is also important to learn the surfaces of the teeth. There are four surfaces present and let us define and locate them one by one. Vestibular surface is the surface of the teeth that faces the lip or cheek. It is formerly called the labial or the buccal surface. This is the surface of the teeth facing the vestibule of the oral cavity. The lingual surface is the surface of the teeth that faces the tongue. If you put your tongue at the back of your incisors, that surface touched by your tongue is the lingual surface. Contact surface is the surface of the teeth that faces the adjacent teeth in the dental arc. This contact surface can be classified further as mesial or distal surface. To visualize better, here are the teeth clip art to imagine the respective contact surfaces. And in between the two teeth is the midline represented by the red line. Mesial surface is the contact surface adjacent to the next rostral or medial tooth and the distal surface is the contact surface adjacent to the caudal or the next lateral tooth. Occlusal surface is the surface that faces the ipsilateral opposite upper and lower arc. Here is another teeth clip art to show the occlusal surface. Dog dentition is classified as diphyodont, meaning like any mammals, they have two sets of teeth, a temporary and a permanent teeth. The dentition is also classified as heterodont, meaning the dentition is composed of various types of teeth that are specialized for different aspects of prehension and mastication. For example, they have incisors, canine, and the cheek teeth. Having said that, let us discuss the different teeth present in a heterodont dentition like dog. Incisors are teeth embedded in the incisive bone and mandible. It is composed of central incisor, middle incisor, and lateral incisor. They are also known as snippers. The canine teeth of dog are robust, long, pointed, and slightly curved. It is the longest teeth in dogs with roots nearly two times as long as their crown. The premolars and molars are the teeth caudal to the canine teeth and are collectively referred to as the cheek teeth. They are grinding teeth forming the sides of the dental arc. Premolars are anterior to the molars. Note that the molars are found only in the permanent dentition. The upper fourth premolar and the first lower molar teeth are the largest teeth and are referred to as the carnassial teeth or the sectorial teeth. Now that you are familiar with the different teeth, we can now understand and write the dental formula of a dog. As mentioned, dogs have diphyodont dentition with a temporary and a permanent set of teeth. In writing the dental formula, it must be noted that the order of the teeth should be followed. I stands for incisors, C for canine, P for premolar, and M for molar. At the numerator of the formula is the number of specific teeth at the upper dental arcade 
while the denominator represents the number of specific teeth at the lower dental arcade. The formula shows only half of the upper or lower dental arcade. Thus, it will be multiplied by 2 to completely represent all the teeth in the counting. The number here represents the total or sum of all the teeth present in the animal. Here is the temporary and the permanent dental formula of dog. A puppy will have a total of 28 temporary teeth and later this will be replaced by 42 permanent teeth. Take note that among the four types of teeth, the molar teeth does not have a temporary counterpart. The next structure present at the oral cavity is the tongue. Anatomically, this is divided into a free apex, a meaty body, and a caudal root. The entire tongue of dog is mobile through its muscular attachments to the hyoid apparatus and the mandible. The lingual frenulum is an unpaired median mucosal fold at the ventrum of the tongue, connecting it to the floor of the mouth. The dorsal surface is marked longitudinally by a median groove or the median sulcus. The dorsum of the tongue is covered with papillae. Papillae can be grouped either as mechanical papillae or gustatory papillae. Mechanical papillae are cornified and has no taste buds while gustatory papillae are embedded with taste buds. Their location and distribution are our main concern in gross anatomy. Detailed appearances will be further discussed in your histology courses. Filiform papillae are the smallest and the most numerous. They are located at the rostral two-thirds of the tongue. They look like hair and they are long and soft. Conical papillae are bigger but less frequent. They are found at the dorsum of the caudal one-third of the tongue. Each stands on a wide circular base and a pointed apex. This is the reason why cats have spike-like structures in their tongue used for grooming. Marginal papillae are present in the rostral half of the tongue of a newborn carnivores and piglets that aids in suckling milk. This disappears when the diet changes to solid. For the gustatory papillae, their names indicate their shape. Fungiform papillae looks like tiny mushrooms at the rostral two-third of the tongue. They are scattered together with the filiform and can also be considered as mechanical. Foliate papillae are a series of leaf-shaped ridges located at the dorsolateral border of the caudal one-third of the tongue, immediately rostral to the palatoglossal arch. The valate papillae have circular projections. They are the largest and the least numerous among the papillae. They are located at the dorsal of the caudal third of the tongue, surrounded by a circular cleft, and do not project above the surface of the tongue. There are at least three to six valate papillae in dogs, but commonly there are four.